Hello, this is Mr. Fields, and this is my video on chemical symbols and formulas. Now, before we uh, look at this, make sure you're confident with the basics of chemistry. I've got that video there, and atomic structure, this video here. So, in this video, we are going to be talking about chemical symbols and chemical formulas, and how to understand them, and why they are important. So, let's start with atomic symbols. Now, an atomic symbol is a one or two letter symbol that's used to represent an atom. Um, it's really important that we write them correctly. So the first letter must always be a capital. The second letter, if there is one, must be lowercase. So let's look at some examples. For example, carbon. Carbon has the symbol capital C. It is definitely not a lowercase C. If you write that lowercase C in an exam, that's wrong because that's not the symbol. The symbol is a capital C. Another example, helium. Again, that has the symbol capital H lowercase e, like that. Now you'll see that normally the symbol is taken from the first couple of letters of the name, but that's not always the case, as we'll see in the next one. Now, so helium is capital H lowercase e, so don't write it as capital H capital E. Don't write it all lowercase, and definitely don't write it um, lowercase then uppercase. It must be capital then lowercase. And finally, we'll look at the example of gold. Now, gold, its symbol is capital A, lowercase u, like that. Nothing to do with the word gold, but it just comes from another language because the symbols uh, weren't always uh, developed by English-speaking people. Now, again, do not write capital A, capital U. Do not write lowercase, and don't write the backwards mix like that. It can only be correct if it's capital A, lowercase u. Now, why does this matter, you might be asking? Aren't we just being really picky? No, we're not. It's about clear communication. So, for example, let's imagine we had two things like this, CO and CO. Now, you might think they're the same, but in chemical language, this is different. C there is the symbol for carbon, and the capital O here is the symbol for oxygen. So, this is actually a poisonous gas called carbon monoxide okay however if we look at the other one capital c lowercase o this is just the symbol for a metal called cobalt and so you can see that unless you write these things perfectly there can be um, confusion about exactly what you mean and confusion in science is a bad thing now you don't actually need to memorize any of the symbols but it can be helpful to familiarize yourself with some of them um, because it will just save you time in the exam. So the first 20 are given here. Um, note most of these are fairly straightforward. Most of them tend to be the first one or two letters. So hydrogen has a capital H, um, beryllium has got B, E and so on. But there are a few that might catch you out. Um, so for example, um, silicon and sulfur often catch people out. So um, silicon is SI, whereas sulfur is just the S. Um, the other two that really catch people out a lot are sodium. Um, sodium has the symbol Na. Um, that comes from natrium, which is the German word for it. Um, and equally, potassium has the symbol K. That comes from kalium, which is the German word for that as well. So for the most part, these make sense. But they, you know, a, a few of them can be a bit confusing. There are also a few others that are just worth bearing in mind that come up quite often in exam questions. So iron, for example, has the symbol Fe coming from the Latin ferrum. Um, copper has the symbol Cu, coming from the Latin cuprum. Um, lead has the symbol Pb, coming from the Latin plumbum, which is the same root as the word plumber. Fun facts. Um, and lastly, gold. Never knew what that one was. I assume it's Latin as well. So now we know about chemical symbols, we can start thinking about chemical formulas. These give us the ratio of the numbers of each of the atoms of an element that are present in a compound. Um, so for example, we can see a whole load of uh, formulas here. When we do the, draw these formulas, we have the elements are represented by their symbols, and the number of each element is represented by a little subscript number just after it. Subscript means small and just below the line. Importantly, the numbers only apply to the symbol just before them. So we've got a whole load of formulas here. You know, we've got oxygen, water, silicon dioxide, glucose. You don't need to memorize those. These are just examples. Um, but what I do want to talk about is how we write them. So notice always we've got the symbol written correctly, you know, capital O, capital H, capital S, followed by an I for silicon and so on. Um, 
and the numbers are always subscript. Now, this is where people go wrong, most wrong with these. So let's look at some non-examples. So for oxygen, look at that subscript 2. We're not going to have a large 2. We're not going to have a superscript 2. For water, H2O, again, not a large 2, not a subscript 2. Silicon dioxide, again, SiO2, we'll keep it subscript. We don't want a large one. We don't want a superscript 2. Glucose, C6H12O6. Again, look at all these nice subscript numbers. We don't want this with large numbers, and we don't want this here with superscript numbers. If you draw them superscript or large, you will not get the mark in the exam. So now we're going to work through some examples of interpreting formulas, starting with methane, which has this formula CH4. Now each time we are going to look at the numbers of atoms of each element that are present and then the total number of atoms as well. So starting first of all, now um, methane has two different elements in it. Carbon, which is C, and hydrogen, which is H. Now there is no number next to the C. So therefore, we have one carbon atom. However, there is this subscript four next to the hydrogen. So that means we've got four of them, but only four hydrogens. The four does not apply to the carbons. So that is the tells us we've got one carbon atom and four hydrogens. And the total number of atoms, we just add them, add them both up. One and four gives us five total atoms. Example two. H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. So the numbers of each element, let's start with capital H, that is hydrogen. Now that subscript 2 means there are two of them. Next we've got S. Now S is sulfur, not silicon, that is SI. There is no number next to the um, S, so what that means is we've just got one of them. And lastly, the O here is oxygen. And that subscript 4 means we've got four of them. Now, again, the 4 only applies to the O because the numbers only apply to the element immediately before them. So this doesn't mean four sulfurs as well, just four oxygens. Now, in terms of the total number of atoms, then, we are just going to add up 2 and 1 and 4. And that gives us a total of seven atoms in each H2SO4. Next example, magnesium hydroxide. Now, this one's a little bit confusing because we've got these brackets. Now, we can think about the brackets in the same way we think about them in maths. So the two on the outside of the brackets means two of everything inside the brackets. So let's see how this works out. So the numbers of each element, first, first of all, we've got magnesium. That is Mg. So magnesium. Ooh, magnesium. Now, there is no number next to the magnesium. So that means we've just got one of them. But the oxygen and the hydrogen are going to be a little bit confusing. Now, in the brackets, we've got one single oxygen. However, we're going to multiply it by two because there's that two outside the brackets. So that's going to give us a total of two oxygens. Similar for the H, the capital H there is hydrogen. It's not helium, that is HE. So hydrogen, um, we're going to multiply. There is no number next to hydrogen, so that means there's one of them in the brackets. But again, there's the two outside the brackets, um, so that's two lots of that. That gives us a total of two hydrogens um, as well. And then finally, if we look at the total number of atoms, that's going to be one for the magnesium plus the two oxygens plus the two hydrogens to give us five in total. Another harder one, aluminium nitrate now. Again, we've got some brackets, so let's work this through. Um, so Al is aluminium. Now, we've just got one of those because there's no number next to it. Nitrogen is the capital N there. Now, this is where we're going to think about the brackets again. There's only one nitrogen in the brackets, but because of the three outside the brackets, we're going to multiply it by three. That's going to give us three nitrogens in total. What about O now? O is oxygen. Now, in the brackets, we've got that three there. So there are three oxygens in the brackets. But because of the second three outside the brackets, we multiply it by three to give us a total of nine oxygens. Which means that if we're adding up the total number of atoms, it's going to be one plus three plus nine to give us a total of 13 atoms in our aluminium nitrate. That end, as always, thank you for listening.